Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. Today's EVE Talk will be a little bit low energy. I mentioned I think that uh, I have been super busy at work in the last couple of months. It should be over, but that does sometimes, uh, like it take a little bit of a toll uh, on your body and so I'm a little bit sick at the moment. Uh, but we will keep going for EVE Talk, of course, this weekly look at the market is something that I absolutely want to do everything I can uh, to uh, to keep it going. Uh, when it comes to news for EVE Online, I haven't really uh, seen anything uh, too uh, important when it comes to the development. CCP is do doing a lot of sales still uh, at the moment, so uh, I think that you can get to Omega pretty cheaply. They also gave those three days to give uh, people a bit of a teaser uh, as to what it's like to fly on an Omega account. Uh, but other than that, nothing too special. So let's dive straight into the new Eden store and see what's happening here. So we get, uh, as I mentioned, a sale happening on the multiple pilot train certificate, for instance, here, 20% off, uh, three, six, yeah, you get a 20% off uh, for all of those bundles as well. Ooh, and a sale for the skill extractor, there we go. Look at that, also getting 20% off, three months Omega as well. Uh, so if you uh, want to or need to uh, reset uh, your accounts, um, or subscribe your accounts uh, there's definitely opportunities happening in the new eden store at the moment which is definitely different uh, when it comes to its impact on the market than for instance a sale on the website so uh, let's dive in we'll get to the pilot services and that's coming in at 145. there we go and as always we start with plex we go straight to the chart if we can find it and we're going up a little bit i'm a little bit surprised here uh, that uh, a sale is not having too much of an impact on the market we definitely stopped our descent though and start going back up volumes are still very very low and the max prices are starting to go higher at this point uh, 4.5 million for the sellers and 4.4 million for the buyers uh, in jira very very narrow spread here again and then we have uh, the Tranquility Trading Tower. That's not doing too much uh, compared to Jira. At this point, we know uh, that's the case because of Plex, of course, and the ability to trade in Jira through the app and things like that. But clearly a little bit of upward pressure here for the price of Plex, but nothing all too major. So it's going to be interesting to see where uh, this takes us, especially this very narrow spread. I personally uh, feel like uh, the market is in a wait and see approach to see what CCP comes, uh, comes up with next. Next, we have the multiple pilot train certificates. Uh, very interesting chart, in my opinion, uh, as we bumped up to that 2.5 million last week. We clearly noticed, well, we got a breakout when uh, most of everything else has a very narrow spread and is actually uh, down a little bit. And CCP actually reacted here with that uh, train certificate sale. So volumes are up, supply is up, and price has been brought back down towards the 2 billion on the chart. 2.2 billion for the sellers and 1.9 billion for the buyers. There's a bit of spread that opened up here because CCP basically intervened in the multiple pilot train certificate market. And then we have the skill extractors that are also on sale. Uh, perhaps uh, this needs to still catch up. You can see that right now that minimum here is heading straight for the 500 million. We are talking 517 to 505. Very narrow spread here with a pretty flat chart, slight upward trend over the last week. But I think we basically need a little bit more time and data before we can see uh, how the sale will impact the price of the skill extractors. Impact on the large skill injectors, a little bit of pressure, but it's very quickly being reabsorbed by the market. So minimum prices took a little bit of a dive well below the 900 million. And at this point, we're back, right? 942 to 888. All right, still a bit of spread here as well. Buyers not willing to be um, baited back to that 900 million just yet. Uh, but the pressure is clearly starting to mount here. For the small scale injector, should be something similar. Well, nope. You can see here, we're basically still at that bottom range for the small scale injector, uh, where the large scale injectors have begun to recover their price. Small scale injectors are, well, slightly less expensive than they were a week ago, which was, of course, at the one year high point range. So it's not that great. A 190 to 176, also a little bit of a difference here. Still a pretty narrow spread between sellers and buyers. So a little bit of pressure. And I think that we will see uh, next week that we will go back up a little bit here for these small scale injectors. Uh, 
Then we have the daily alpha injectors that are now bumped up substantially above the 50 million mark. Today's data point is just above that, but that must be because buyers are dominating. No, actually look at that, bit of selling coming in at 53 million, buyers at 48 million. So the spread is again really very, very narrow, just 4 million. Um, it is not a lot, but we are back above that 50 million. So we'll see. Uh, I personally think that here we got a little bit of a CCP intervention on the training certificate. It's going to be interesting to see if CCP intervenes on the daily alpha injectors as well. And then finally, we have the hyper cores that I think are uh, showing us that, yeah, we are done expecting lower prices and we are getting into that wait and see pattern. Everything is coming together, 20 day, 5 day and daily averages. Today's is actually up just a little bit, probably uh, when we look at Plex, uh, that uh, this uh, feeds that expectation. But this market really has pretty narrow spreads, doesn't know uh, exactly which way to go. And I think that's normal because it depends on where CCP is going to take the game next with the 20 year anniversary, potential expansions, things like that. So it's, it's an interesting time, uh, but when it comes to Plex, in the market uh, it's not that easy to see where all of this will take us look at this 464,000 to 451,000 super narrow spread between sellers and buyers everything coming together and basically yeah we'll have to see where we go from here but as I've said I feel like a lot will now depend on announcements from CCP next we have the mineral markets 645 there we go and as always we start with titanium you may have spotted that let's see if i can get the chart to show a little bit uh on the ticker we have to give back a little bit of our gain so last couple of days we we're still sometimes able to sell at 4.3 isk for the sellers now in gita there we go we're at 4.2 and the buyers are still at 4 ISK. So I think this is actually still quite reasonable. Uh, it does feel like uh, Nulsic is quieting down a little bit. Um, but uh, you never know how that evolves uh, as well. But the market is responding with, all right, we're still willing to pay the 4 ISK for the Tritanium, which is quite reasonable. Uh, but we're not going to go all too crazy. Uh, no one, I think, is expecting uh, like a, a massive super capital brawl or anything like that uh, in, uh, in too short order or lots of keep stars to be destroyed. Destroyed. For instance, that would require lots of resources to uh, recover from. The pyrite chart is staying well above the 10 isk as well, pretty easily I would say. 11.13 to 9.92 though, so you gotta be a little bit careful here. Buyers are starting to drop off a little bit. Um, I would say here, I'd be at like a 50-50 approach, sell half, keep half for perhaps a better price later down the line, or uh, maybe slowly build up a reserve. Um, because I think if something cool happens from a CCP announcement or uh, there is an explosion in, uh, in Nelsic action, uh, then you can take advantage of better prices. Then we have Mexon also able to defend that 60 ISK range, 61 to 60, super narrow spread here as well. Uh, but again, for me, a reasonable price, uh, but also still a price where you could consider holding back a little bit on selling and building up some of those uh, Mexon holdings. Then for Losek, here is the oxygen chart and definitely a change in sentiment as well, which I think uh, I mentioned was a possibility. Uh, considering that we reached 625 and I think Noxium was around 800 or, or 8 to 900 at that price point, this felt like we could start to see oxygen move uh, a little bit more like a, a market uh, with its supply and demand issues potentially. And here we clearly have a little bit of a demand issue as we drop off. Clearly break through that 20 day moving average with the five day and the daily averages so a bit of pressure the market basically says we don't need that much isogen probably again because Nelsic is not exploding the way it looked uh, like uh, early on in the war when those four keep stars were uh, challenged 577 to 547 still pretty damn expensive of course so if you uh, have uh, isogen or you're able to bring isogen to the market i still think you're pretty damn happy with the price 
Noxium then also showing signs of fatigue here. You can even see today's daily average going uh, way down all of a sudden. So same story, I think. 9.10 now for a first seller, 8.75 for the buyer. Uh, so a bit of pressure here again on expectation that we will need less and you may have seen it on the ticker as well but for Nullsec, at least for Megasite it was the same story and here we go Zydrain doing the same thing couple of weeks of going back down in price 2150 to 2100 very very narrow spread so the market is I mean the buyers they know they have to pay that price for Zydrain but slowly uh, I think people are realizing we may not need all that much Zydrine or crazy amounts won't be needed uh, and um, there might be enough uh, opportunity for miners, for suppliers, enough stability in Nelsic to keep those supplies coming without too much pro trouble. Uh, and so same story here for Megasite, did come from a one year high point above 3,500 disc, but is clearly uh, reaching an inflection point as well, below the 3,000 now for the sellers and 2,9 for the buyers. So uh, very big change in the dynamic uh, for, uh, for minerals this week. And finally, we've got more fight that was already going down and I think is uh, now being uh, taken down as well uh, just on the general sentiment in the middle market and so we're basically reaching the lowest point in quite a few months sellers coming in at 39,000 buyers at 37,000 they're still careful but this is clearly a bit of a trend break from that 40k sell price for morphite so good news i would say for industrialists that are looking for some cheaper resources and some more margin potentially on their production pi is next coming in at 11:30. and yeah i am speed running this one a little bit as i said i'm not 100 percent but let's go through the list here i think we'll start to see the same story and uh, broadcast notes for instance definitely coming off of the one year highs that were at around 2.5 million selling now for 2.3 buyers 2.25 though so the demand is there uh, again, my theory is that uh, BI is the next bottleneck for large ship production. Um, but uh, at least now, under the current market situation, it does look like uh, we're getting a bit of a breather. Uh, but <laughs> here we go. Construction blocks actually breaking out. Oop, there we go, like that. Are we selling above 13? Yeah, 13,150 to 11,400. So here... Um, this is this is clearly uh, i think one of those signs that uh, that we are talking potentially bottlenecks here in pi because despite the fact that in general you would expect the mineral market to also have a bit of an impact on the expectation for pi we still have a one-year high point suddenly out of nowhere uh, popping up in construction blocks selling above 13k uh, does show that yeah there's people that are desperate for the stuff Coolants easily staying above 11,000 as well. Supplies are not great. Almost 12,000 for the seller, so very expensive. And rich uranium also going even higher. That's kind of crazy. 14,400 for the sellers, 13,000 for the buyers. So definitely so far a good week for the refined PI materials. But uh, here you can see take response drones basically flat with a little bit of uh, downward pressure at the tail end 3.2 to 3 million is still very expensive of course mechanical parts also back up for the week so close to 12.5 12.4 for the sellers very very expensive miniature electronics coming down from a one year high point at above 20,000 isk for a fine pi material so that was of course very unusual we're still very close to that 20k uh, for the sellers 17,000 for the buyers so a bit of spread opening up here uh, which is normal of course when something becomes that crazy expensive but for advanced pi material we are sort of seeing uh, a little bit of a trend break here for instance nano factories another leg down uh, back towards a million we're still well above that at 1.2 but clearly away from the one year high point organic motor applicators a couple weeks ago close to 1.5 million now below the 125 so again same story here recursive computing module did do a crazy crazy jump to 4 million all of a sudden again for me this is one of those signs that we are talking bottlenecks at the moment uh, when it comes to the production of uh, of larger ships but 
uh, supplies definitely started to come in and this was partly speculation as well uh, I think uh, based on data that they uh, scraped from the test server that this would be needed uh, in uh, I think it's the race that's happening at the moment for the sheep caster so this one is coming back down a little bit well from four to three million is, is definitely a decent amount but it's still super expensive of course on the one year chart but if that didn't happen uh, I think we would actually see a little bit of pressure at the moment on the recursive computing module. Robotics, though, continuing to climb, so very impressive. 126,000, no, 127, almost 128,000 now for the sellers. Definitely a bit of a breakout here. Rocket fuels, a little bit of pressure, but from 15,000 discs, so it was down to 14,000, which is still very, very expensive. And then self-harmonizing power, of course, you can see here, basically flat over the last two months with a one-year high point spike. Very expensive, but no further breakout at the moment. Then we get the smart fab unit, clearly having to give back quite a bit of ground on the lower volumes, but still 75k on this one. No, 70k now for the bars. So a bit of pressure here and there is clearly visible. Sarah Conduits, confirming the story, made its way to 1.5 million and is now down a bit to 1.35 million. It's not much, but clearly away from that high point. The uh, crazy rush seems to be over. Supercomputers, same story, down a little bit. Our synthetic oil definitely uh, coming down. First one of these refined PI materials that also shows this a uh, bit of breakdown in price at the tail end and that reaches the 10,800 for the sellers and below 10,000 disc for the buyer. So synthetic oil definitely um, taking a bit of a beating in the last couple of weeks. Synthetic synapses, 130, very expensive. Transcranial, micro, transcranial microcontrollers, still above 100k. Water-cooled CPU. Big spread opening up here between sellers and buyers, but sellers going above 10,000 and buyers going below 8,000. Very unusual situation. But again, what's happening? Not a lot of supply. So the bottleneck uh, issue, I think, is part of the problem. And here for the wetware mainframes, again, advanced PI materials closest to that uh, uh, capital ship production going down uh, slowly definitely hesitating to keep building uh, so my read on this is that yeah you have to keep in mind that uh, some extreme volatility all of a sudden can come out of nowhere because there are bottlenecks in pi especially of course when uh, the the economy in general wants to make a lot of capital ships but for this week uh, it's a little bit like with the story for minerals I think the market expects less destruction, especially less large ship destruction, considering how things are evolving in NullSec. And as a result, the advanced PI materials are getting a bit of a breather. Uh, but the underlying, right, the rush to make a lot of these that are very expensive does still seem to be going on. And thus a lot of the refined PI materials are having another extremely good week. Uh, for PI, I, I would still say I'm, I'm selling everything that I'm making. Uh, it's just really good is at the moment next we have advanced moon materials coming in at 1755 <clears throat> let's take a look at these first of all we've got crystalline carbonite for galente production all right bit of a dip a uh, cup 10 days ago or so fully recovered back to the 150 uh, again i am really surprised at how stable all of this has become uh, so this in my book has been in december here one of the most successful ccp interventions when it comes to resources and things like that they very specifically said we're gonna nerf output for moons by 25 percent in order to um, maintain and, and improve a little bit the value of what's being mined from these moons uh, but without i mean there is of course a bit of a bump here but very quickly the market basically fully absorbed that and we are in that new reality where instead of 100 disc you get 150 disc for your crystalline carbonite for instance then for Kaldari, it's titanium carbide. That's also now just above 150. And you can see a little bit of more movement on the chart here. Uh, Kaldari is definitely biggest faction, uh, has some really cool ships. So there is that slight premium, but it's nothing too crazy either. And here is the December uh, rush on the announcement. For Minmatar, it's Vernite carbide. Um, that one did not recover that much. Of course, one of its heavy assault cruisers lost uh, popularity. 
as a result there's a little bit less of a premium on this one a 115 120 something like that for fernite carbide and then last week amar did really well continuing to climb close to a one-year high point but you can see that uh, the uh, supply response does work on this market and so tungsten carbide selling again for a 170 just below 150 for the buyers so all of this is also basically in line with one another sometimes you get slightly higher prices but then the market's able to supply more stuff you know to bring the prices back down if we go too low supplies will stall and we'll go back up in price so really good a nicely functioning market in my book um, and a successful here December intervention by CCP. When it comes to the metamaterials, we go through the list here photonic metamaterials for Galente and all right, uh, a late bloomer, but here we go. I definitely have to sell this week. This is what I was sort of hoping for uh, and I was uh, no longer expecting it, but here's a bit of volatility and a nice one year high points at. Uh, almost 13,000 for the sellers and if like me you bought here below 7.5 you've got a nice profit mar margin but will that be across the board well no here is non-linear for Kaldari <coughs> excuse me um, pretty much flat at 15k so again 10k at the bottom 15,000 recovery after the changes from CCP and I honestly expect that it will start to move around this range without too much trouble then for Minmatar it's plasmonic metamaterials also that recovery right low end below 10,000 disc we're now at 13,000 perfectly in line with the carbides a little bit less than Galente and then Caldari but definitely still recovered and then for Amar, it's terahertz metamaterials that did do very well over the last couple of weeks, made its way just below 20,000 and is still able to plateau there for a week. 19,200 for the sellers, 19,000 for the buyers. So I have made gambles in metamaterials. If you've done so as well, uh, you can definitely look into selling the terahertz and the galente and the photonic metamaterials. Definitely a nice profit for those that were patient. And then for the general feeling, here is the rest, slight upwards pressure for fermioni condensates. Um, actually, at 50k, no, yeah, it's just below 50k for the sellers. Not a lot of supply. I honestly think supply will come in and will bring us back closer to 45 pretty quickly. Ferrogel, right, did a bump to one year high point. It's absorbed and we are basically back where we were a year ago. Slight pressure for the week, fullerites. Settling at 700, hypersynaptic fibers settling at 6.5, 6, no, 6.2, 6.3, something like that probably. Uh, 6.3, there we go. Nano transistors, pretty flat at 3,000 as well. A uh, little bit of volatility here in December, and then we basically got that that premium from CCP intervening, but uh, we're not doing anything too crazy. Phenolic composites also clearly stabilizing here. Pressurized oxidizers, this is a little bit different. Uh, those newer items, which is pressurized oxidizers and reinforced carbon fiber. I mean, newer, they're, they're older than a year, but uh, they're definitely way newer than the other advanced materials that we've got here. Um, they went to one year high point, but again, the supply uh, response does work at this point there's still plenty of opportunity to make this stuff and to bring it to the market if you can sell at 15k lots of people want to take advantage of that and so you can see uh, they may even be overdoing it a little bit we're down to close to 10,000 for the buyers for instance and then reinforced carbon fiber that's a little bit more what you would what I would expect a little bit more careful landing on the 12.5 and I think here 12.5 to 12.3 yeah exactly very narrow spread here we have to accept that yeah this is going to become a little bit more expensive uh, why is this well because these are newer items and so compared to for instance fullerites there are there's huge amounts uh, historical amounts of fullerites that still uh, find their way uh, to, to the markets through the entire game there's a lot less of reinforced carbon fiber because it is in your item and does this one can command a bit of a premium compared to the others Ceramic fibers then also doing uh, quite nice here, uh, coming in at 368, but also clearly stabilizing after gaining uh, a little bit of value. So overall advanced boom materials, I think some sell opportunities exist here and there, uh, but I 
don't see the big volatility or anything like that uh, showing up anytime soon, which is perhaps a little bit unfortunate, but yeah, my, my bets were specifically in the meta material. So I'm very happy this week because I have uh, some opportunities that I can take advantage of. Next up, the take two ships coming in at 24.25. There we go. And let's see what's happening here. Unfortunately, uh, this is something that I didn't expect to see a little bit more of as well. While well, last month we had a, an amazing sell opportunity for instance for the Basilisk at 180 million. Because the advanced move materials are not moving all over the place, are not making one year highs and things like that. I think a lot of Tech 2 ships will actually start to stabilize at the new range that they'll be going for. And so um, if like me you've been buying for a very long time. Uh, deciding to sell may need to be accelerated a little bit um, and, and taking a little bit less profit than what you're expecting uh, might be what you have to do. For instance, the Basilisk makes its way below 150, 145 to 136 million. It's definitely nowhere near the bottom prices, but you can see a slow and steady amount of pressure uh, coming in here. That is, is basically a sign, in my opinion, of stability will eventually just start to uh, move sideways on this one. It's there. It's a possibility Then we've got the Cerberus and this is very unfortunate of course because I'm holding actually a couple of these as well But just a very slow gradual <laughs> recovery of the price is what's happening here as well 160 through uh, 63 to 151 million and yeah what I was basically hoping for is that we would see a spike like that for the basilisk uh, that we see in the basilisk for the Cerberus as well and when what was happening in Nulsic I thought we definitely have a chance perhaps you know someone decides we need to do uh, a, a full Cerberus fleet let's buy everything and then you can spike to 200 million it just never materialized and so here I have a tough choice to make uh, because you can see at the tail end as well that we're hesitating to go higher from this price point so do I take my profits or do I wait uh, for uh, for like a pronounced one year high point? Maybe uh, something happening in Elsic. It's it's a difficult choice uh, at this point. Curse here, uh, right? Early December spike up to 200 million. Should have sold my, <laughs> my curse at that point. Uh, now it's not bad, right? We're at the 180. Uh, but look at that bit of pressure coming in 174 to 156. Uh, so a bit of pressure here and clearly, right? Uh, very stable for the month. Then the damnation went to 400 million uh, earlier in the month, but again is now starting to come back down and it's basically just above 300 million. That's its new range, 324 to 303. Then we've got the Deacon here next. Yeah, exactly the same story. Double sell opportunity at 30 million and now just stable at 20. Uh, next we've got the Eagle, exactly the same story again, went to a 180 and is now landing on a 150. Uh, the EOS, very, very nice 400 million sell opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, my EOS, I bought it at 254, so definitely a nice, uh, a nice bit of profit and you could have bought below 250 as well. Uh, so overall not bad, but right, there are enough people that are trading these ships that we're bringing in a lot of supply. And so here we get a little bit of uh, maybe even too much of it going back below 300 million and now we're back at 353 to 254 big spread happening here. But my expectation again is that we will stabilize uh, on all of this. So it's very difficult uh, to decide to hold for even longer or to start taking profits off the table. Aries as well, right? Double sell opportunity at 70 and now stabilizing yeah, buyers at probably above 50. I know 57 for the sellers and then 38 for the buyers quite a bit of spread as well which I think means that it has room to just slowly edge and land somewhere uh, a little bit lower uh, flycatcher right again sell opportunity here at 75 and then now we're stable above 50 so buying below 40 is no longer on the cards uh, the Guardian also peaked out in March and is starting to come back down at 150 perhaps uh, perhaps I have been, uh, you know, uh, mentioning the nice trades uh, for uh, for Tech Two a little bit too much, and so a lot of you guys are uh, 
are, are unloading your Tech 2 ships. I mean, we're still doing pretty well. Actually, right, about two weeks of action and we're still at the 150. It's not bad. Sellers, in fact, still at the 163. So uh, we're not going completely crazy. And that also means that since we won't see uh, any real crashing, like below 130, again, for the Guardian, it's not easy to, um, to jump back in, to find that jumping point for Tech 2. Heretic though, we have our exception. So if you're holding heretics, I think you'll be pretty damn happy because you're selling them for 68 million and you could have bought them for 30 million uh, during the period where we were keeping an eye on the lowest prices. That's over double your ISK. So one very, very nice sell opportunity. Um, don't hesitate, guys. I would definitely take advantage of this one because as I've said, I'm seeing, seeing more stability coming in uh, on the rest of the market. Uh, here, the Houndstail Bombers, I thought we'd have more, but we're back below 20 million ISK. Clearly, these are not doing that well. Uh, Iggy Terza back about 500, but there's not that much to trade on this chart. Ishtar uh, back below 180, uh, but again, we basically have a new range here uh, for the Ishtar that's away from that 130. I would not be surprised if we take a couple of steps down, but the 150 to 180 uh, seems to be the new range for the Ishtar. At the moment, actually pretty damn expensive, uh, so it must be a popular ship. Uh, then we get the Kirin, again, uh, early March, nice sell opportunity. We are coming back down. And as I've said, considering what we're seeing in advanced formats, unfortunately, I don't see us really going to crazy. Sellers are careful, right? Don't, they're not dropping uh, prices below 20 million, you know, desperate to take that profit if they came in at, at 20. Nope, they're keeping it around 25. So, um, yeah, still a difficult choice to make because you'll, on this chart, for instance, you feel like you're too late and you should get that 30 million. Uh, but if you went in at 15, you're still looking at a decent profit. But what should you do? That is, of course, the whole game. Then we got Manticore uh, landing on 20, basically stabilizing as well. Nemesis landing or just below 20. Not much to say. I'm quite disappointed by the Stealth Bombers because I have a few of all of them. Um, so uh, we'll have to be patient for those. Nighthawk, you can see that those minimum prices sometimes test the 250 here again. 300 million for the sellers, 270 for the buyers though. So expect this to become the new normal. But this one very quickly uh, saw, um, started to stabilize. Oniros, double top. And then now also 150 for our logistics cruiser. Seems to be the range. And then a bit of volatility in the purifier. Definitely had a sell opportunity. Uh, maybe even overreacted because you can see those minimum prices here touch the 20 million. And then we jump back up to well above the 25 million. So this is the volatility that we were hoping for. But unfortunately, the market is generally a little bit too careful, a little bit too smart for us. Uh, and uh, in most of the ships, this does not happen. Here, you have another jumping point, a little bit above 20. Get another sell point at 28, something like that. So that's a pretty cool chart uh, to actively trade. For those, I want to, to trade on, on a more daily basis almost. Uh, but it's quite rare, as we can see. Like here, uh, the Rook went to 200 million, lands on 150. Not doesn't look at those minimum prices also just going next to nothing so super stable here saber uh interdictors also uh, most of them yeah interdictors throughout the stealth bombers should have been the gamble went to 60 is now landing on the 50 million scalpel had a nice uh sell opportunity here as well but now just below 20 that's where it's gonna be stuck uh, Scimitar, slight bit of pressure coming from a price above 150, so even this is not great. Slip near, you can clearly see very early sell opportunity, and then this is what I'm expecting a lot of these charts to look like in a couple of months. And then we've got the Vagabond, slowly stable, very, very slow movement, so not that great. And then for Triglavian, a bit of pressure over the last week for the Zarmast, with buyers coming in below 400, yeah, at 382. And I almost call this a jumping point for the Zarmast here, uh, if you want to try a Triglavian trade. But generally speaking, I think uh, if you bought at the right time, uh, you're still looking at profits, but um, it's a difficult decision to make because for a lot of them, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, you would have made a lot more ISK and now it's a difficult decision to make. And as I've said, a lot of all of this is going to depend on what happens in NullSec 
and what the CCP announced. So uh, the the market is definitely in that wait and see approach. We could go in any direction as always, uh, but if nothing too special happens, then I fully expect everything to basically stabilize at yeah, slightly higher ranges uh, or decently higher ranges than what we had uh, earlier on. So it's interesting, um, but uh, for, for those that have those Tech 2 ships, it's a very difficult choice to make. Then we have the Tech 3 ships. Let's uh, go to, through the list here at 3420. There we go. As always, we start with the destroyers and the confessor jumped up to a 60 million and is now basically at this range. 62 to 57 million. Um, probably a little bit of buying here, uh, same time as we peaked. So this volume is the same time as we peaked in a lot of the Tech 2 ships. But because it's such an anemic market, this one doesn't really have the uh, opportunity to uh, see lots of supplies coming in and then bringing the price back down to start that volatility. Now this will also be a slow and steady slog back down to lower prices uh, as Nelsic decides potentially uh, that they won't need too many of them. Uh, it, this might look like a trade opportunity and it actually is. Yeah, you could have bought below 50, sold well above uh, 60. Uh, but I personally feel like this was a pretty risky bet to take considering how super stable and not so popular these tactical destroyers have become. Uh, the Hecate doing a little bit of a jump here as well. Look at those minimum prices starting to drop off though. 59 to 55 million so um, very difficult to say if we'll, if we'll maintain this price range the jackdaw had uh, a, a spike similar to the take two ships in timing and you can see this one is also uh, is, is doing a little bit better when it comes to the supplies coming back down to the 60 million as well yep 62 to 50 million for the buyers though very big spread opening up here um, i do feel like there is just less interest and so selling uh, especially a lot of ships is hard to do in this and then this vapor basically shrugging everything off <laughs> still just above 50 million on the chart uh, and has been here for basically the last couple of months uh, i personally feel like we've got a way better action and potential in the cruisers you can see here how the legion uh, just a couple of days ago came very close to the 180 so i think these are now those bottom ranges and average prices are definitely starting to go back up uh almost 200 million again for the sellers and 183 for the buyers bit of spread that opens up here and this feels like yeah maybe five days ago you could have jumped in on a legion uh, for the low key you can see from time to time you also have those minimum prices that can take a real dive now average prices are staying very expensive here 207 for the sellers 194 for the buyers so there's definitely enough interest in the low key uh, that on most days buyers are pushing up but you can also see from the minimum prices here that sometimes um, there is a bit of a drop off all of a sudden which create if it has enough momentum and can pull down the five day moving average as well can create a nice buy opportunity like down here like down here so that's personally what i'm i'm looking for when it comes to take three and the approaches did that uh, just last week as well went below the 200 um still quite hesitant of course because we're not reaching the 180 anymore which is super nice jumping point but you can clearly see here how the dynamic has changed already so you could have probably bought for uh, below 190 million and sellers are coming back in at 223 million so pretty nice profit uh decently decently predictable uh, and definitely a nice sell opportunity so uh, actively trading this can can be pretty lucrative i think and then finally we get the tengu unfortunately here we need to wait again for a bit more momentum you can again see that those days where those minimum prices are dropping off do exist uh, but we need enough momentum on that to pull down that five day moving average spot that buy opportunity and then just yeah wait for for a bit of a bounce like what's happening right now with the proteus so for me take three ships uh, i would be trading in the cruisers uh, if you have uh, that kill assures that you can sell of course like the confessor like the Hegate, like the jackdaw bring him to the market you are getting the best price for almost a whole year at the moment for these ships um <clears throat> but to to find a jumping point and things like that i feel is uh, is very very risky 
And then finally, as my voice is practically giving up, let's go for the Gecko for the extra product. Just gonna take a look here for the feeling in general at 38.45. <clears throat> So I'm making it a short one here, but you can see here, I, I feel like we've got that same uh, dynamic as a little bit with Plex. At the moment, we are going back down and this is not on new supply or anything like that. This is just market expectation where we are hesitating. We went to 130 and even higher here. Pretty damn good, right? Nice value. And we've been able to hold on to that for uh, most of the start of year, most of this first quarter. But at the tail end here, uh, you know, I think, especially when the war, uh, when we had those four uh, challenge keep stars, that were not um, <clears throat> destroyed that is where everyone is like oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute we might not see the war in Nelsic that everyone is expecting and we don't really know what CCP is planning either so let's be a little bit careful and basically people have been selling their gold bars taking their profits at 130,000 uh, million excuse me that would be very cheap of course uh, for the gecko and so this is that psychology you can also see for the last week on the daily averages though that we have started to move sideways so the market has gone in that wait and see pattern 118 million to 106 uh, spread wise this is 11 million that's actually a normal 10 percent spread i'm a bit surprised i thought it would be less but in general right <clears throat> we had a bit of a high with well the expansion and everything that was announced and with the, introdu the introduction of direct enlistment those events and everything and then nelsic that potentially looked like it was kicking off as well uh, but the market is now saying here over the last couple of weeks now it doesn't look like we're we're going to go that hype uh, and here at the tail end we're like yeah which way do we go from here difficult to say and so the market is in that holding pattern uh, which is in general is, is of course to be expected because i am also waiting to see what ccp announces next and as well for what they're planning for the 20th anniversary of eve online which is not that long in the future anyways that is it for this eve talk guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time